Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of a 48 pulse control rectifier in MATLAB. This is a circuit diagram of a 48 pulse control rectifier. The circuit looks very big, uh, but trust me, this is very, very simple. And uh, by watching this video, you will definitely be able to simulate this on your own. And you will definitely feel good about yourself after doing that. So, all right, uh, 48 pulse control rectifier uh, can be built in many ways by combination of uh, 8 6 pulse control rectifier in this particular fashion that we are going to follow. Or it can also be built using 4 12 pulse control rectifier or 224 pulse control rectifier but with respect to simulating them in MATLAB uh, the complication increases if we follow the other methods this is quite simple with respect to that so that's the reason why we'll be following this similarly 36 uh, pulse control rectifier 24 18 12 all of them are simulated so in case you're watching this video directly without that don't worry you will be able to do this on your own I'm going to start out from the scratch all right, let's get started. Let's go to MATLAB and start our simulation. All right, here we are. So uh, we will be clicking on the Simulink library browser and we will be searching for PowerQ block. So MATLAB provides one of the really good features uh, to search the components that are required. It's always preferable to search them rather than uh, searching uh, in this particular section as where they are. So uh, at PowerQ block, we require a voltage measurement block. Um, and then apart from that, we will be requiring a three phase source. So search for three phase source, you will be getting it over here. Um, add this block as well. Once this is done, we will be requiring a VI measurement block. So search for VI measurement block and add this block as well. Once this is also done, uh, we will be requiring a PLL synchronization block. So this basically synchronizes uh, with respect to our supply frequency. This is a recent addition uh, in MATLAB in comparison uh, with the previous ones. So add this block as well. And uh, once this is done, uh, we will be requiring a pulse generator block, which is six pulse. So it is right over here as well. So add this block. Uh, and uh, uh, we also require a uh, thyristor uh, bridge. So search for thyristor. We will be using a universal bridge. Uh, so you have to scroll a little down and add this block. So this is basically a six pulse uh, universal bridge, which basically has six thyristors within it. So once uh, this is also done, we will be requiring a transformer uh, to provide phase shifting uh, with respect to uh, the universal bridges that we are using so we will be using a zigzag phase shifting transformer so once this is added up uh, we will be requiring a series RLC branch uh, which can later be converted into inductor capacitor and resistive loads respectively once this is also done um, we will be requiring uh, an RMS value block so we will be searching by mean we will be getting both mean and RMS value but at the end of the day we will only be choosing RMS value value scroll a little down don't use the ones that are there this is used for DSP uh, digital signal processing signals and systems application scroll a little down use the one that is there over here add this block uh, once all of these are added we will be requiring a display block uh, which is required to display the amount of RMS voltage that is there uh, apart from that we will be also requiring a scope which is here over here Add this block as well once all of these are done, uh, we will be requiring a constant block which is used as a firing angle uh, that is used as an input over there. So that's the reason why we need that. So add this block as well. So we have added all the blocks that are required according to our circuit connections. So we will just be placing them in appropriate positions so that uh, we can get started with our circuit connection. Um, we will be placing uh, the firing angle block uh, just up uh, towards in the upper portion and we will be using this uh, at this particular point. Uh, for convenience, we will have the source in the extreme left hand side and we'll be using the power cube block right at the top. And uh, we will be reducing the size of zigzag transformer because our complexity of the circuit increases. So reduce the size uh, so, such that they almost assemble to be in the same size uh, and we can copy paste them and connect in a particular fashion. So uh, similarly, uh, we will be doing it for the other blocks as well. But before that, go to parameters, change this to 50 into 10 power 3. Um, this is the power that we are designing it for. So choose this and 
change the frequency to 50 Hertz according to our design uh, we don't have to do anything else with respect to it just click on ok and once this is done copy paste this uh, eight times so we will be doing it uh, by pressing ctrl C ctrl V so we can further uh, reduce the size or uh, the view uh, by zooming out with respect to MATLAB uh, by using this functionality so we have copy pasted it six times we will be requiring to do it uh, for another couple of times as well so uh, I will be placing this right at the top over here so once this is done the reason why I did this is uh, once we enter the parameters for a particular block all the parameters will be same for all the other zigzag transformers we don't have to enter them again for all of them so uh, please make sure you do that otherwise uh, the complication in typing them will increase gradually uh, so we have eight blocks I believe one two three four five six seven eight so yeah uh, we will be copy pasting the universal bridges in the similar fashion just place them um, adjacent to them so that we will be requiring to connect these ABC blocks to the respective uh, universal bridges uh, block so that's the reason uh, it's always a good practice to place them adjacent and the circuit also looks much better in that case so I have placed eight blocks with respect to uh, them I will be uh, connecting the respective terminals that is with respect to uh, A3 to A, B3 to B and C3 to C. So do it for all the other terminals uh, in this particular fashion. Um, so that uh, the with respect to a circuit connection if you carefully observe the zigzag transformer output is given to the universal bridge. However gate a pulse will be given uh, using these blocks that are there in the upward position so uh, apart from that remaining terminals can be connected uh, in this particular fashion so once all of these are done we can uh, get started with respect to our supply point of view place this uh, right at this point such that it looks at the center um, double click on the VI measurement block uh, disable the current measurement we don't want that we only want the voltage to be measured and once that is done uh, we will be giving the three phase uh, supply connections at this particular point in this uh, so directly give it to the VI measurement block so this will measure the voltage of ABC with respect to ABC phases and give it to the PLL synchronization block so what this PLL synchronization block does it uh, synchronizes uh, with respect to our supply frequency however we not enter the parameters uh, we'll double click on it and change this value our supply voltage is 254.03 uh, 05 volts that is uh, nothing but uh, uh, 440 divided by root 3 change the frequency to 50 Hertz so according to your country standards you can do in some countries they are used for 60 Hertz in some countries they are used for 50 Hertz so choose that to be equal to 50 Hertz however if you are choosing 50 Hertz you have to constantly use 50 Hertz to throughout the circuit and if you're using 60 Hertz you have to constantly use that throughout your circuit so one of the most important points to remember uh, so I will be uh, connecting uh, the short circuiting uh, minus terminals that is with respect to the zigzag transformer in this particular fashion so we have to do it for all the zigzag transformers out here so once this is done um, I will be connecting uh, the A phase with respect to this point and B phase with respect to this point and C phase with respect to C now what can be done is that you can take uh, the tapping from this point as well all of the ABC terminals should be connected to the respective ABC terminal with respect to the VI measurement block so we can connect it directly uh, at this point or you can directly connect it to the previous ABC blocks as well so uh, do this in this particular fashion or you can have uh, a separate viewpoint where you can see them separately and take the tapping directly so I will be doing in this particular fashion with respect to all the other zigzag transformers so from ABC previous ones ABC anyhow it will directly go into the supply isn't it it will directly be connected to the VI measurement block so we can do it in this particular fashion so uh, the circuit does look a little shabby in case you want to look uh, make it look much better just uh, take a separate tapping from this point and connect it to all the terminals respectively so for this particular uh, simulation I am just focusing on uh, getting the output uh, and how uh, in order to make sure uh, you understand how it can be simulated in MATLAB so that is my major objective with respect to this video 
so once all of these are connected uh, we will be uh, entering the parameters with respect to the firing angle block so this is the firing angle that we are supposed to choose uh, we will be choosing uh, a firing angle of uh, 10 degree apart from that uh, double click on this they've asked us for uh, uh, pulse width isn't it so based on the amount of universal bridges that uh, that is we have eight universal bridges so 360 divided by 8 is 45 choose it to be equal to 45 so uh, this is the firing angle 10 degree alpha so don't get confused with the one that is there inside which is the pulse width uh, with respect to the individual thyristor blocks in a particular universal bridge so we will be doing uh, it in this particular fashion in case this block in case you want to see how the pulses are generated you can connect it to the scope and see how it looks like and once this is done we can give it to the first thyristor bridge in this particular fashion so similarly we need to do it for the other cases as well but before that let us enclose the circuit in this particular fashion minus to plus minus to plus minus to plus uh, so uh, this uh, will the circuit gets enclosed and once it is enclosed we can uh, copy paste uh, the uh, firing angle block eight times and then we can change the values respectively so we will be requiring an inductor at this point uh, just to stabilize the amount of current that is flowing uh, to it so we will be choosing it to be equal to 200 milli henry and i will be copy pasting uh, this block again rotate it by using control r and i will be choosing a capacitor at this point and its value will be chosen to be equal to 10 uh, microfarad i am not having a specific design details uh, uh, the design changes with respect to the applications i am just uh, using this uh, values of capacitor and inductor based on trial and error um, so based on that you will be able to get the output or you can uh, go on with a exact design procedure based on the application that you are using so i am using 1400 ohms uh, resistance value just because of the fact if i am practically implementing it i have uh, a rheostat and i can change the values and uh, see how it varies so that's the reason why it is done the extreme end universal bridge that is the eighth one should be connected to the other end of the resistor and this one should be connected in this particular fashion so the load end of the circuit is enclosed now our important uh, point of uh, doing the circuit is to copy paste this uh, a lot of times so reduce the size of it so that uh, it should be compact with respect to our circuit now copy paste this uh, another seven times because we have have already done it for the first universal bridge so we have done it uh, five times this is the sixth one uh, and this is the seventh one so we need another one that is the last one over here so once this is done we don't need uh, eight synchronization blocks just because of the fact that already the synchronized frequency is obtained at omega t terminal over here we can directly take the tapping from that point or uh, we can uh, use different uh, blocks as well but that again increases the complexity of our circuit isn't it so that's the reason why i didn't focus on that so connect uh, the omega t terminals uh, to the respective previous ones anyways it's connected to the same point so it doesn't make any difference so connect the omega t over here so once this is done I'll be taking the firing angle block here so that uh, the firing angle will remain same with respect to all the other blocks as well isn't it so uh, connect it with respect to uh, the individual ones uh, the firing angle over here connected to the previous one anyways it will be the same that is 10 uh, degrees so connect it uh, to the previous one over here again do it for the rest of the ones in this particular fashion i hope you have understood the concept of doing it isn't it so if you understand the initial one or two blocks we will be repeating the same for all the other blocks isn't it so that is the concept although the circuit looks much bigger uh, it is very very simple uh, i hope you would have got uh, an understanding of how this can be built by now so i will be giving the pulses to the respective gate terminals uh, in this particular fashion and once this is done uh, we can uh, connect um, enter the resistor over here is not connected properly so i'll make this connection and uh, the voltmeter should be connected between the resistor at these two points uh, in order to measure the output voltage connected to the rms value block uh, one of the most important 
important steps is to double click on this and change the fundamental frequency to 50 hertz that is what our supply is all about so connect it to the display block and also take the tapping from the output voltage to the scope in this particular fashion in case we want to see how the supply voltage also looks like we can connect a voltmeter at this particular point over here and then um, connect it this is with respect to phase voltage AB and connect it to the scope just to see how uh, the phase voltage looks like uh, in case you want it to be seen so we have uh, entered all the parameters I believe and uh, we have uh, connected the circuit according to the circuit connections so this is the circuit diagram of a 48 pulse converter so one of the most important things now to remember is to um, not have a huge simulation time in case you want uh, to see uh, the exact waveform uh, you can see it from 0.5 to 1 seconds uh, or even with respect to 0.5 if you simulate it will give you a proper waveform uh, however you need to wait for a long time uh, the simulation process uh, takes a lot of time here to run all right um, I I am getting an voltage of about 204 volt uh, which is a DC voltage at the output terminals now we'll check the waveform by double clicking on the scope um, and uh, I will categorically separate them um, as two different waveforms in this particular fashion and um, you can see uh, the amount of ripple is slightly higher uh, however we can reduce this uh, by further increasing the value of capacitance or uh, designing it for a different value however there is an harmonics with respect to uh, the supply voltage um, so there will be harmonics with respect to supply current at the input terminals as well so uh, we have to be very careful and uh, eliminate the amount of harmonics that is there by using a three phase harmonic filter uh, so that is how we will be simulating a 48 pulse control rectifier in MATLAB in case you uh, have any questions feel free to reach out to me by typing in your questions in the comment section below um, if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates uh, thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you